The first use of biometrics in education, as far as is known, was in the County of Angus in Scotland. In 1999, the county started using biometric fingerprint systems in schools to log students through the canteen. The schools in Angus, 21 years later, are still using the system. In 2001, a company, Microlibrarians, approached the Information Commissioner's Office in the UK to see if it was within the scope of the Data Protection Act to use children's biometric fingerprint data for a library system to log books in and out. Here is what the Commissioner's Office said. It is understandable that concerns will be raised over the use of such technology if it is believed that it involves the holding of a database of pupils' fingerprints. However, from what I understood of our discussions, although theoretically possible to use the information obtained from this system to match fingerprints taken from the scene of a crime, the resources this would require makes this highly impractical. In light of this, I do not believe that the use of identical fingerprint technology to identify the library members raises any data protection concerns. Microlibrarian also received a letter in 2002 from the Department of Education okaying their use of biometric technology. These letters effectively gave the green light to the biometric industry to introduce technology into UK education. Primarily, the technology was used for registration, canteen and libraries. And from 1999 to 2013, school used a variety of biometrics, often without informing parents. If parents were informed, an opt-out rather than an opt-in was applied, without exception. None of which, including the widely used fingerprint systems, were largely or at all in the commercial marketplace outside schools. Some examples of different biometric systems used in UK schools in the period from 1999 to 2013 were iris scanning. In 2002, this was trialled for a canteen use in a secondary school in Sunderland. In 2006, infrared palm scanning was trialled by the Japanese company Fujitsu in a primary school in Paisley, Scotland. In 2010, facial recognition was used for registration in high schools in Northamptonshire. All of these technologies were scrapped after being found not fit for purpose. Whilst the UK was busy using biometrics on its school population, the rest of the world was not prolifically using the technology at all. As far as is known, the only other country to use biometrics in education was the USA, and their use, which was only the fingerprint, wasn't until the late 2000s. The only biometric identifier which seems to have passed the test for widespread use in schools is the fingerprint. At the moment, in the UK, there are no other biometrics in use other than one isolated infrared palm scanning at a preschool nursery in Oxford. There is hardly one aspect of the school management life that cannot be excluded from biometric technology. Although primarily used for cashless catering, biometric data is also used in the library, for registration, door access, photocopying, locker access, monetary payments, laptop access and vending machines. There are no figures held by the Department of Education or any UK department on the amount of schools using biometric technology or the number of children with their biometric data on school databases. The Information Commissioner's Office, who oversees the Data Protection Act, also does not collect figures on the storage of biometric data or processing of schools using biometrics. To date, neither the Department of Education or the ICO have ever examined any biometric system in school, software or hardware. The only method of loosely determining figures of children with their biometrics stored on databases is to send individual schools freedom of information requests. This is not an accurate method of determining figures. The schools' reply to freedom of information requests are very poor and vary from a response rate of around 45 to 60%. So we can only make assumptions on the schools that have responded to freedom of information requests. There is proof to indicate that schools that do not answer freedom of information requests are using biometric systems, and these can boost the figures with schools using biometric systems by nearly 50%. The UK has a school population of 10 million children, and these two figures are based on that. From freedom of information requests and commission surveys, it was showed that in 2007 it was estimated that 2 million children were using biometric systems. In 2013 it was estimated that 3.2 million children were using biometric systems. More recent figures from 2016, sent to over 200 secondary schools across the UK, are based on that secondary school and sixth form population of 5 million students, where the technology is more common. It was found that at least 2.8 million of the 5 million school population were using biometric systems. However, the FOIA response rate was very poor, and taking into account that biometric statistics rise significantly in schools that do not respond to FOIAs, we should perhaps be working near a 70% figure of that which a commissioned survey found in 2018, which suggests an increase in the prevalence of biometric technology in secondary schools. Thus, 
providing a more accurate figure, showing that around 3.5 million out of 5 million students in secondary schools and sixth forms are using their biometric data. The significant point here is not simply about the numbers at any one snapshot in time, as getting an accurate figure is difficult. It's about the prevalence of biometric technology in schools. Hence, there is a high chance that a pupil going through the UK education system will at some point encounter a biometric system. The issues with biometric technology in school. There are a range of issues here, but the most fundamental ones are. This is completely unnecessary when another form of ID easily suffices, such as a PIN number or a card. It's a disproportionate amount of personal information to give up in order to access mundane, everyday school services. Biometric data of children must be secure for a lifetime. Not knowing what possible future implications of compromised biometric data can have, can have on an individual in years to come. There is the potential to share biometric data between other databases outside school without the data subject's knowledge. And it also desensitises that generation to the use of their biometric data without question. So what rights do our children have to request the less privacy intrusive form of identification in school? In the UK, we have the Protection of Freedoms Act 2012, which only applies to students in England and Wales. The Act details that schools can only process a child's biometric data when the following criteria has been met. Each parent of the child should be notified by the relevant authority they are planning to process their child's biometrics and notified that they are able to object. And, in order for a school to process a child's biometrics, at least one parent must consent, and no parent has withdrawn consent. This needs to be in writing. Also, the child can object to the processing of their biometrics regardless of parents' consent. Legislation covering biometrics in European schools is under GDPR. In August 2019, in Sweden, it ruled that facial recognition used for attendance was unlawful, um, citing Recital 39 of the GDPR. In February 2020, Poland um, deemed that using biometric fingerprints for a school canteen was in violation of Article 9, Item 1, GDPR. October last year, France, the CNIL, stated that facial recognition could not be legally implemented as the proposed system is contrary to the main principles of proportionality and minimisation of data laid down by GDPR. The USA has 50 states and five of them have legislation regarding to biometric technology in schools, four states dealing with consent and one Florida actually banning the use of biometric te technology completely in schools. Australia uses a facial technician and also fingerprint recognition and one of the letters from a Victorian Catholic school secondary school to parents said that the facial recognition program is based on student facial recognition and can determine a student's whereabouts on campus at any given time. So where does the data go? In the UK, general information gathered against biometric data can go to a catering company, to the system supplier, the school information management system, local councils, NHS, social services, Department of Education, etc. But this also applies to data held on non-biometric school systems. However, regarding specifically to the transfer of biometric data, a Freedom of Information response received in 2016 from a high school in Liverpool clearly stated that biometric data from the Candine database was passed to police and social services. When questioned further on this, the school retracted the response and said they had made a mistake in their initial answer. In 2013, all UK police forces were sent Freedom of Information requests to determine whether the police were accessing school biometric data. The responses were completely inconclusive, with nearly 80% of the forces refusing to answer the request due to cost. The remaining 20% either had no data or failed to answer with only two forces stating they had never accessed biometric data from a school database. With the expansion of more screen interactions between student and school to deliver lessons and homework, children spend increasingly more time interacting with the school via electronic devices. Scotland has the biggest iPad rollout to its pupils worldwide. In conjunction with Apple and the tech company CGI, which supplies Glasgow, Edinburgh and Scottish borders with IT services, a total of over 150,000 school children, nearly 20% of Scotland's students, will be given access to their own iPad by 2021 under the CGI contract. Under this scheme, there is no way to ensure the correct pupil is completing work set other than the following methods, and this is just received from Freedom of Information requests. The response is stated, Teachers know the level to which their pupils are working and will discuss with their students if they have any doubt. That was from Scottish Borders this January. 
Teachers use their professional judgment to scrutinise all work undertaken by students, whether submitted electronically or on paper, from Edinburgh. It could be argued that this work monitoring system is open to abuse, with others doing work set for individual students. Indeed, after speaking anecdotally with a teacher at Inter High, an online UK high school, this is a problem they have and it is not always easy to identify when work submitted has been done by somebody other than the student it was intended for. In 2015, a solution to this potential problem was trialled in a school district in California. Students logged into their iPads via facial recognition technology for a first-of-its-kind pilot project. This involved the iPad scanning the child's face every 60 seconds, claiming to help kids log onto the iPad and for them not to forget their passwords. However, this was not just about remembering passwords or saving time logging on. The facial scanning constantly verified the students so to stay logged in. After privacy concerns raised by parents, the scheme was halted shortly after it began. In recent events that we are globally experiencing due to coronavirus, schools in India and UK stopped using their fingerprint scanners due to hygiene concerns. Whether the practice of using fingerprint scanners is continued after the ongoing events is unknown. We could perhaps be looking at more facial recognition use in education because of hygiene fears surrounding fingerprint scanners. From the recent rulings in Euro Europe, from France, Sweden and Poland, using GDPR it is becoming clear that the processing of children's biometric data in school is in contravention of that legislation. We are currently asking the ICO to re-examine the use of biometric technology in UK schools in the light of these recent rulings under GDPR. We are also looking to extending the rights of consent under the Protection of Freedoms Act 2012 to include children in Scotland and Northern Ireland, and to also extend the remit of current biometric commissioners in the UK to cover the use of children's biometric data in education.